Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to be home in the state of Florida. I have been in Louisiana for the last three months, and that's my home. And I, I had time to spend with my family, and that's always nice. And we came back out, and we started here, and we're on the road again. So what is God going to do? You know, we're all looking for God to do something. That's what man looks for, you know. And it's really normally, uh, what is he going to do for me? You know, I, I'm glad when he blesses you, but really, I'm looking for the blessing. And, 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 and so I'm wondering tonight, who is he going to bless? But if he blesses anybody, bless me, Lord. I want to be blessed. Any, do you want to be blessed tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. It's, uh, I won't take a lot of time in, uh, uh, with uh, just talk, but um, introduction or anything. But I want to uh, kind of talk to you tonight. And um, I, I have something that God gave me. And I've been dealing with it for the last two days. And I believe that it will change your life. Uh, if, if you will hear what the Spirit of God has got to say to you. I want more power. I, I want more power of God. I, you know, I, 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 don't want, I don't want to sound like I, I'm just going to use that or to be uplifting myself or anything, but I want to be able to go into to, uh, to the hospital rooms and lay hands on people and, and see them recover. I want to see the blind eyes open. I've been, I've been to the, to the uh, children's uh, hospital where I've seen these infants, I, uh, infants that are crippled and that have got cancer. And I, 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 my heart moves out with compassion to, to believe God and, 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 and just maybe exercise my faith to, to just lay hands on them and believe that they'll, they'll get up. I, I want that demonstration of God. I, I want that. That's, I believe God wants that in our life. I believe that that's how he's, we're going to show the world that we're serving the one true living God. Without that power, uh, we're no different than anyone else. You know, it's, it's kind of like you can tell me about you know, all you want to talk about, but show me something. You know, I, I want to see the demonstration of it, don't you? And, 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 and so tonight, I want to go to the Lord, I mean, go to the Word of God uh, with this thought, and uh, if we'll turn our Bibles over to the book of um, Mark. Uh, let's see. Chapter uh, 12 and verse 30 and verse 29 said, First, and Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. I, I was, I looked up the word because because I'm not uh, real educated, I've, I, I have admitted that many times. Uh, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like I'm com completely uneducated, but I just wanted to understand for sure what the word all means. And, and, and I, so I looked it up. I, I know you probably know the definition, but five times... Did Jesus speak this, that I want you to love me with all? Five times in that one verse. So he's trying to get a point across. He's trying to, to make me aware of something. And I, I wanted to know what that was. So I said, well, let me look up the word all. And, and the word all, it means whole. 
It means entire. It means total. It means the amount of quality or extent of every member or, or part of the whole number or sum. So with that, I, I understand that he wants everything. So I, I began to uh, 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 search the scriptures, and I came up with this thought that as he began to talk to me, and this is where I want to take you tonight, to uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. It said, For I say, though the, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to, as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. I want to talk to you tonight about God's measuring cup. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for your spirit. I'm asking you, Lord, to now to open up our ears and let us hear what the spirit has to say to us, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to give me favor tonight, God. Give me the words to speak tonight, God. Lord, bless your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise. Give him a big hand clap of praise. You know, when you when when I, I was thinking, uh, I, I love the dictionary and I love reading the the uh, words, looking up words because I find so often words that I uh, take for granted that I know have much deeper meanings to them. And and with that, I I began to ask the Lord. He says He's given every man a measure of faith. So I was just wondering. Uh, how do I measure that? How do I measure uh, the faith that I have? What is the measurement of faith that he's given me? So I look up the word measurement, I mean measure, and it says an amount or degree of something or something such as a cup or a ruler that is used to measure things, a unit used in measuring something. So with that, I, I began to think and I let my mind go off to wonder. And and I thought as a as a demonstration, I, I would like to demonstrate what God maybe is trying to say to us. Because I want to be more like him. I want to see his power. I want to see his anointing. I want to I want to have this faith that he's telling me about. And 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 uh, so I won't spill this all over, brother. Pour this in there for me. And 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 so I began to think about measurements. I began to think about look up the scriptures and see what God uh says about measuring things throughout the Bible and that he measures he he's measured the things uh throughout the Bible. It's it's mentioned uh just numerous of times of of things that uh uh he measured and and but that wasn't a clear uh uh it wasn't clear to me to of understanding that of one scripture alone that set out to to give me the the uh, the understanding that I wanted to know that he meant about this scripture where every man has been given a measure and we use that so often of of uh, uh, in our walk with uh, as a Christian uh, every man has a measure of faith. Every man in here has a, a man, and woman in here, child in here has a measure of faith. But I, my question is to you: Is do you uh, how much faith do you really have? What is that measure of faith that you have? Because every man has been given a measure. It didn't mean that we was given the equal amount. It didn't mean that uh, 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 he's not a respecter of person, so he didn't give you a little bit more than he gives me, but he gave us all a measure to, uh, uh, to uh, a faith that we will need of becoming something that maybe we're not. And so I, I, I began to think about measuring, and, you know, when I, I, I cook a lot, and... You know, my daughter told me, she says, well, I love to cook rice because I like rice. 
And she'll say, get a cup, Dad, and, you know, put so much in it. And then and you look at it and, you know, we you, you got six cups, uh, 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 six parts of a cup here. Uh, and but this is not a full cup. So you would say this is not uh, uh, I mean, if you want to measure it out, it, it's really a half a cup. So it's not a full cup. And, you know, I got to thinking about that, that how much faith do I have? Am I a half a cup? Am I a full cup? Do I just have a little bit of faith or, you know, or do I, I mean, uh, or do I have a lot of faith? I'm, I've been so, uh, I've been, I've been told that I am the faith man and, and, uh, everywhere I go, uh, that's what I'm known by. And I've been called up by many times to pray for people because they say, you got great faith. Well, how much is great faith? Have you ever wondered how do you how does God measure our faith? If 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 we can measure things such as with a measuring cup and having knowing right here this is a half a cup, but but most of us when we get we when we get uh, cooking, I, I've seen my mother. She'll take. We'll have to just clean this up, brother. But she'll take it and then she'll she'll have a whole cup. She'll wipe it off at the top. She now this is a whole cup. And I, I got to thinking about that, about how God measures faith in me. That as he as he put give me enough for a whole cup or just a half a cup or maybe just a little bit of faith. I, I, I know there's many times in the Bible that uh, he, he went to his disciples during a storm and the storm got out uh, 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 got out, out of hand and and it began to be furious and tossing the little boat all over the place. And and Jesus was on the boat, and yet as he was sleeping, Peter went over to him, and I think it was Peter, and woke him up, and, and he says, don't you care we perish? And he said, uh, Peter, as he stood up on the bow of the boat, and he, he looked over and he said, peace, be still. Then he turned to them and he said, oh, ye of little faith. In other words, they didn't, if this is the cup, a measuring cup, they, they must have had just a little bit of faith in there. They didn't have much. Didn't say they didn't have any. It just said they had a little bit of faith. And, and, and I got to thinking about how that that was a gauge to them. That's what he was saying, that I just measured you. You've just been put in the, the scale, on the scale. And, and you only had a little bit of faith there. A little storm caused you to show how much faith you had. He wants me to love him with all my heart. It is so easy for a man to be distracted. I mean, we can be here in the church... And a baby starts crying, and it can distract you. Just a baby crying. It takes your attention, and you're focused on the baby. Now you're not hearing what the word of God is saying. It is, it's been, it's been a, a downfall for us ever since time began with man. When God has spoken his word to man and given to man, that uh, man did not follow his word because he was distracted. She was beguiled. Eve, Eve was beguiled. In other words, she was tricked into listening or looking at something else and forgetting what God has said. Thus, the downfall of man began to understand something, should had, that we can be so distract, so easily distracted away from the calling of God and the purpose of God and the working of God in our lives that, that's, that, that it's be so easy for us to get distracted from that simply by looking at something else. So easily we get caught up with the cares of the world and with the cares of life. We're so, we're so prone to respond to my flesh, the needs that I have, the wants that I have, the desires I have. We all have them. We all want them. And we all pray 
for God to fulfill those desires. But is that is that a really a way of saying the knowing that when God answers one of your prayers and supplying one of your needs, is that a way of gauging how much faith you really had? So my question is, how would God measure our faith if he's doing the measuring? Why would he even want to concern himself with us having faith? For the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must have faith to believe that he is a rewarder and that he that if you uh, that that he is going to reward you so i must believe that he is and therefore i go to him so my 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 question i started asking myself is is god how much faith do i have i don't know about you but i i want to know that i want to know how much faith because if i have faith that i don't it may be in reserve that I don't use. I want to start using it. I want God to start showing me because he said that if I had faith, I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Didn't mean when they were going to recover. It just means they shall recover. You might, you might, not, you might not get healed right now, but you're going to get healed because I, I obeyed the word of God. I've done what he said to do, and that thus, therefore, it's impossible for him to lie, so he, you're going to be healed. Amen? So I, I've, I, I want to understand how to exercise my faith, but first I've got to know how much faith I have. And the only way that I looked through the Bible and, and, and saw scriptures after scriptures of, of trials that people have went through and understand some principles that God was teaching us through the scriptures, through other men's experiences, for me to understand how to know how much faith I have. Because if I have that faith to believe, it's going to take all that I've got. To believe. I know that there was a four leopards sitting outside a gate. And they, they, they began in Second Kings chapter 6 or 7. You can go look it up yourself. And they began to talk among themselves because they were hungry. And, and, and they knew that they were going to die outside the gate. Just sitting there. So they began to talk. Uh, among themselves and began to work out a plan. They began to, uh, to, to think about, well, if we stay here, we're going to die. But if we go in, we're going to be, our enemy's going to take us and they'll probably kill us. And uh, so it, what do we do? So they began to pray. I believe they began to pray and they began to ask God what to do. And I believe God because the reason I'm saying this is because the scripture says that as they moved into the city, God that night pre-adventured moved on the Syrians' heart, ears, and began to put noise in their ears, and they all fled. So because of their faith they had in God, God blessed them. And then after they got in, they began to seize the gold. They began to seize the treasures and they began to talk among themselves and say, wait a minute, we do not fare well here if we do not go tell somebody of the goodness of God. So they went and told a potter, a porter, I mean, and, and the porter began to be blessed. And so with that, I understand that because they had trusted God, they believed in God, that they, they, they pre-adventured, went and tried their faith out, believing that God was going to be on their side. So it's in the confidence of giving all they had, all their mind, all their thoughts, all their will, and their life to pre-adventure, to walk into a city that they were going to die if they got caught because they were leopards. And yet they trusted God. Faith, trust in me, believe in me. 
I, I, I know a man that, uh, another story right there in Kings, there, there was a, a man that had leprosy. His name was Naaman. Naaman was a, was a captain of host of, of, the, of the armies of Syria, and he wanted to be healed of leprosy. Isn't it just, it, I, I just think it's, uh, I've preached that here before, but I, I just think it's so comical for a man to have leprosy, to stand up there and, 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 and argue with the man of God of how to be healed. When all the time he wants to be healed. But it, 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 it took a matter of faith on Naaman's part that we can see that he was contentious with being told what to do. So we have a problem with having uh, somebody tell us what to do. So often we want to be blessed and we go to the man of God and he tells us what to do, but we're going to argue about it. We're not going to uphold to it. We're not going to heed to what they're saying. We, we, we have our own thinking. We have our own way of believing. We have our own suggestions what to do. But God said, I want all of you. I want all of your mind, all of your heart, all your soul, all of it. So it is, it is in me not only trusting in God, but then it's giving my allegiance or my obedience unto him. So that's another part of faith that will has to stir up. It's a, another part that I've got to understand that faith has a lot of other things to it than just faith itself. It's, 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 it's the other parts that exposes the faith that so I will know. And so I, I understand that the little woman in Kings here is, is she is having a, a starvation problem. She's getting ready to die. All she has is two stick, a couple of sticks she's going to pick up and go make a little fire because all she has is a, just a little cornmeal and a little bit of oil. But she listens to the, the, the prophet and she says, I'll go in and do what I have, what I was going to do. And then when I get the cake, I'll bring it out to you. And so there's that obedience again of listening and obeying. It was faith that because of her faith to give everything she had, she gave all she had unto the prophet. And God then began to bless her. I want to tell us if we are ever going to get blessed tonight and in and, and our faith, we're going to have to give all that we've got. We're going to have to give our whole beings. We're going to, have to give our whole soul, all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our strength. It's got to go to direct it towards him. So I, I began to understand that uh, how much faith do I really have? And I was listening to the pastor this morning, Brother Eric, and as he was talking, uh, what, what beautiful teaching that was this morning. It, it, I, I tell you all, so blessed to have a teacher that can expound the word of God in such eloquence that he does. It's, it's, it, it's a blessing. I, I, I personally, I, I was saying to the Lord, I, I'd like to sit here a couple, you know, a couple of months and just listen to him. We need teaching. Because this is where this is what I'm trying to do tonight. I'm just trying to follow up on on how does our faith work? How does how do we know how much faith we have? And and so I began to understand some other things about the scriptures and other people's lives that that what they went through. And you know, here we have we we have a story in the Bible uh, that the disciples themselves uh, was at a picnic with with Jesus Christ and and and. They, 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 they was getting tired and, and, and hungry. And so they said, well, all these people here, we better send them home because we have no way to feed them. We have no way to take care of them. And, and they were really exercising their faith. And Jesus said, no, don't, don't send them home. He said, matter of fact, just have them sit down in groups. And he said, tell me what you have. And Little is much with Jesus. I like that because it don't take a lot of faith 
forget him to move in a mighty way. We can see the demonstrations of God if we just had a little bit of faith in here tonight. The sick could be healed tonight. The, eye, the blind eyes could be opened. The cripple could walk tonight. If we could just stir up that measure of faith. So they sit them down and they said, oh, oh, Lord, all we have is two fishes and five loaves. And that surely is not enough. They, you see, they just had a little bit of faith. Just two fishes. That they, so, you know, as a man think it in his heart, so is he. The Bible says, I, I love the scripture when, uh, where it says, the tree shall be known by its fruit that it bears. So whatever's coming out of them is out will be an indicator of how much faith is in them. And they only had a little bit of faith. They wanted to send them home. You see, they want them to go take care of themselves. But Jesus said, I am the one that feeds them. I'm the one that cares for them. I'm the shepherd. My father has sent me to take care of them. I want to feed them. I'm the bread of life. So he says, sit them down. Give me the bread. Give me the fish. And he said, get me 12 baskets, one for each one of you. And he breaks it, the bread, and he blesses it. Then he gives it to them, and they all go out. And they began to give out the bread. And I've done that here before. And they take it and they take it and they get all the way through the crowd. And they look down and they see all of a sudden, instead of a little faith, they got a whole bunch of faith. Because it should be empty. But it's full. So their faith is exuberant. I mean, it's running over right now. It should be. But he puts them in a boat. Right after that, and the storm comes up, and they say, "What? Pa we perish!" And he turns to him and he says, "Oh, ye of little faith, you seek me for the loaves and the miracles, but not for who I am." So often, the Lord. Uh, so often, we. As the Lord began to talk to me, was saying, that's my people. My people misunderstand, it's, and it's so easy for them to be misunderstood, that they need to be seeking me and my kingdom and my desire, not their kingdom and their desire. We so often understand that we want to be like Jesus and we want to walk like him and we want to talk like him and we want to act like him and we want to say that, oh, I've got Jesus on the inside of me and uh, and all that's real good, but I, I can tell that when you get under pressure, what's really inside you, your faith will then begin to expose your who is really on the inside of us. Mary said it like this at a wedding feast. She said they were out of wine, and she said to, I guess, the porters or the servants, she said, whatever he says to do, just do it. She had great faith. Her, her cup runneth over. It wasn't just full. It ran over because she knew that he was the Almighty. She knew that he could, he could do anything that she could believe him for. Great faith. I often wonder, how much faith do I really have? Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son. And I love how the scripture says it. I want, it, I want you to take the son the most. The one you love. I really understand that. I, I do. I have a son that I love very dear to me. 
very, very dear. And I just could not imagine doing what Abraham did. I, 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 I just cannot imagine doing that. But when the Lord says, I want all your heart, I want all your soul, I want all your might, I want all your strength, I want everything you got. It's so hard for us to give something, devote ourselves to something with all I've got and yet still give myself to someone else. I, I think that's going to be very difficult to do. If, if I gave you, I, I know this is maybe frivolous, but if I gave you this handkerchief, I couldn't possibly give it to her because I gave her everything. I have nothing else to give anyone else, but I gave it all. So how can I, with my faith, be divided? For a house cannot be divided. It cannot stand. I've got to understand that God's calling me to a, to a walk of faith with him. For there's a reason he's calling us is he wants to put his spirit in us. He wants to reside in me. And no flesh is going to glory in his presence. So I cannot be of two house or two natures. I've got to be one that is humbled and contrite of heart, that is humbled myself to the almighty God for him to live within me. It don't make me perfect. It doesn't make this flesh perfect, as I should say. It doesn't make me flawless. It just makes me a vessel that he can use. And if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. Am I making any sense yet? I'm talking about how do I measure how much faith, how do I know how much faith I have? So when Abraham uh, went up and take, taken his son up to the mountain and laid Isaac on that mountain or on that altar. He raised that knife and the, the angel of the Lord said, hold it, wait a minute. For now I know how much faith you have. Faith to believe to take your son that you love, the one you love, and offer it up to me. By this, I know how much faith you have, Abraham. Faith in what? Faith to believe. I, I'm going to say that one more time because I felt that right there. Faith to believe. To believe what? God has given every man a measure of it. That measure is to believe that he is and that he is everything that you need him to be. But it's going to take the measurement to show you how much you believe. It's going to take the trial for every man shall be tried by fire. Every man's faith is tried by fire, James says. And then this fourth, it brings patience. Patience to wait upon the Lord. For when we pray, God does not always answer immediately. So I must wait upon the Lord. Because my I'm going to need that patience to wait. I need that faith to understand that he's not forsaken me yet. He has not gone anywhere yet. He's never left me yet. He's always there. I've got to continue that word. It's got to flow through my mind because I need that faith, that measurement of it. Because at any time, a storm could brew up and then I could lose that faith. 
that trial that comes upon my way of, of uh, the inability to supply the, 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 the cares for the cares of the world or the cares of my family. I've got to understand that God is my supplier. He's my, come on, he's my helper. And it's, through, it's through those trials, it's through those sufferings, it's through those tribulations do I understand that he's measuring my faith. Because I know that all things are working together. For whatsoever I'm going through, I understand that, that he, he guides my steps. He alters my steps. I am a righteous man. I, and he said the righteous are led by his spirit. His steps are ordered by him. So I've got to understand that everything that's happening to me, he is ordering it to happen. So I must then have faith to believe in his ability to take me out of it. Not in other man's wisdom. Paul said, I trust in no man's wisdom but of God's. For I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. I've got to understand that I need to know that in times of difficulties, I've got faith. So he, he'll test us. He'll try us. Just you say, well, he tries no man. Yes, he does. You go throughout the Bible. He's trying all these people, their faith, so that they will know how much faith they have. So when cancer came on you, you prayed. You, you, you worshiped. I've seen you. I've, I've watched you many times. Just stay right here and, and just believe God. That's faith. What other way will I ever know how much faith I have unless I go through a trial? That's going to try my faith. I've got to understand how much faith I have for every man has been given a measure of it. You have a measure. How is your faith right now? How much faith do you have? How much faith do you have to believe? How many of us in here right now needs something from God? And how often do we cry about it? And how often do we ask about it? And how often do we are bringing it up before the Lord as if, when are you going to do it, God? Can I get an amen there? Because he's saying, wait a minute. I've allowed this to happen because I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you the measure, men of your faith, to believe. Because without knowing, how will I ever know him? For I cannot know him. He's a spirit. But I can know him through faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. So, so often our trials that we go through, maybe, maybe we should not be trying to pray them away, but maybe we should be asking God, increase my faith, Lord. Let me stand in my faith, Lord, to believe. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and he leadeth me besides the still waters. My cup, my cup run. That's what he, he was saying. His cup was full of faith. Is your cup full of faith tonight that we can stand in the presence of our enemies with our droughts, with our with our complications, with our with our with our failures and with our mistakes and with our mishaps. And yet we can still stand up with our hands lifted up unto him and praise him and worship him because he is. He is everything I need him to be. Faith. I know it's so easy to be knocked off of your faith. I, I told a story here about a girl that I know very dear to me, and she had cancer. And last time I was here, I was talking about her. I'll never forget going into the hospital room, seeing four 
tubes coming out of her neck and one big tube coming out of her back. She's gasping for breath. She's losing her life and her life is going out of her. It's diminishing quickly and I, I'm thinking she's going to die any minute and yet I'm looking at her thinking, well, God, you told me she was going to live. And so easy now I'm talking to her husband telling him, are you prepared for her to die? I'm thinking, where's your faith? Faith. It just took that little scene to knock you off your faith? I turned to her and I said, God just spoke to me. And he said, you're going to live. You're going to live. I said, I don't care what I'm looking at right now. I don't care what storm you're going through right now. I don't care what life is situation that's handing you right now. I'm telling you right now that God Almighty spoke a word of faith to me. He said, speak to you and tell you that you're going to live. I'm telling you, she came out of that hospital. She's doing great now. She has, I don't know if she has any more cancer in her body or not, but I know the last report is they said she's fine. And that's all I know is that God is still doing what he said he was going going to do she's going to keep on living because God said it because if we can keep our faith in this time it's not by sight it's by faith so I understand how many of us and myself I want to believe I want to exercise my faith I want to I want to see the power of God. I believe that, that if we, as children of God, understand that we have the Holy Ghost within us, and everyone in here has got the Holy Ghost, then you got the power. Yet, I wonder if we could, the ones that said they're in need, would stand up and come up here to believe their faith, their faith. Do you have that faith tonight to believe that I can be healed tonight? Because God said it. Didn't God say if I would give him all my heart, if I would give him all my might, if I would give him all my strength, if I would give my, my allegiance to him, that he would do anything, anything. He said, I'll do, he said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. If you got the faith. How much faith do you have tonight? That God can fix your situation. Maybe it's not the situation that needs to be fixed. Maybe it's just God working in your life to show you where you stand with him. Because we cannot be serving two masters. We must seek after the kingdom of God in all his righteousness. And then these things shall be added unto you. Seek the will of God. What is the will of God? The will of God is that all men might be saved. Come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and be saved. To have everlasting life. That's the will of God. That's what we want. That's what we should desire. That's what our faith should be directed as. But I understand that God is working in us and he's trying to bring about this measure of faith how much faith do you have it's so easy to have faith for others but can you have faith for yourself to believe it's not by my might but it's by his spirit saith the Lord, is by his spirit. There is no, there, this is very important, but there is no, you don't need to reason here. 
You don't need to figure it out. You don't need an explanation. You just need faith. Faith to believe what he said. That don't make no sense. But that's what Naaman, that, that was the story of Naaman. He started trying to figure it out. Well, there's, a, there's, there's, there's two other rivers that I could go dip in. Why don't you just do what he said? God is talking to this church. He's talking to you. And he's saying that he wants to have a greater church. He died, he laid his life down for this church. And he's looking for someone to have faith in him. To have faith in God is to, to understand that my cup has got to be full. It can't be half empty. That was the, the purpose of all the demonstrations. Mary and Martha are crying. They're weeping. Here comes Jesus. They said, Jesus, if you would have been here. That's their faith. Their faith was just exposed. If you would have been here four days ago, you could have healed them. That's, what they, that's where their faith was. But when Jesus stood there and said, but wait a minute, I'm the resurrection. But you see, you would have never known that if Lazarus wouldn't have died. So now we understand that all things are working together. So I need faith to understand what I'm facing or what you're going through or what we're, what, we're, what, we're, what we're dealing with in our lives right now. Just have faith. Stop worrying about it. Stop focusing on it. Focus on Jesus. Get your eyes on the kingdom. Come on, get your eyes on the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. If I die, I die. But I've got a resurrection coming ahead that Jesus Christ is going to take me out of the grave. I ain't, I'm not going to die. Come on. Fear. The grave can't hold me down. I don't want to die. I'm not trying to make short of it. But what I'm saying that the grave is not the, 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 the grave to have no sting anymore. It's the mentality that we have. We're not of this world. We're passing through. We got a kingdom ahead of us. With a king sitting on a throne that says faith, faith, faith. I wonder if God was to ask you tonight or you could ask yourself this question. How much faith do you have? How much faith do you have? And if you have that much, what would you do with it? Understand what I'm saying? There's so many of uh, right here that need a need and if you had the faith to believe you would lay hands on that person next to you and ask God to grant that because you have that faith you have the faith to believe for anything he said if there'll be any among you lack for anything let him ask come on he said, if any be sick among you, he said, call for the elders and let them pray for one another. Faith. Faith. Simple faith. Come on, I believe faith is being stirred up right now. Come on. People are being healed right now. People being delivered right now. Come on, you can have the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, by your faith. By your faith. Come on, re give that faith to someone else right now. Fear's got to be gone. Come on. 
Faith. Faith. Just a little bit of faith. That's all you need. It's just a little bit of faith. Come on. You're praying to a God that hears your prayers. You're praying to a God that said, oh, anything you ask, I'll give it to you. Come on, believe it. Come on, receive it now. Receive it right now. Come on, is that faith stirred up in you? Is that faith stirred up in you? Come on, stir up that gift of faith in you. Stir up that gift right now. Come on, begin to believe right now. Speak it out right now. As one with authority. Come on. As one with authority. You have authority with God. God has given you that authority. He's given you that dominion right now. You have it right now. Take dominion over that situation. Take authority over that situation. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Come on. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let that faith explode. Let that faith ignite right now. Come on. Touch him right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, he said I was the great physician. He'll heal you right now. Come on, if we'll give all of our heart to him, give all of our soul to him, give all, come on, get in line. Come on, I want my cup running over. Come on, God's much bigger than my, God is much bigger than my faith. Come on, he, he's much bigger than me. Looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus. Where anything is possible to them that believe. Come on, just stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Come on. Stir up that gift inside you. It's, it can happen. It can happen. Come on, we ain't, we ain't guessing for it. We're believing it now. We're speaking it now. We're speaking it now. Oh, hallelujah. You commit to me and I'll commit to you. Come on. He wants to be God. He wants to be Lord in your life. Hey, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. More like you, Lord. More like you, Lord. More like you. It's amazing to me. Just give me your attention just a little bit. And I just want to say this now. Give the mic to the pastor. But it's amazing to me. In our trials that we go through. But Peter, in the book of Mark, Peter and Jesus is walking. And Jesus sees a fig tree that wasn't blossoming, had no life to it. And he cursed it. The next day, Peter's walking with Jesus and he says, oh, the fig tree, look at it. It's dead. It withered up. And the answer that Jesus gave him was, Peter, greater things shall you do. He wasn't concerned about the tree. He was concerned about Peter believing, having faith, 
to believe that greater things shall we do. Then he said, if you'll speak to the mountain, you have faith. Understand that you have authority. Understand that you have the dominion. Come on, we have that in us. We've got to start exercising that. And I believe that God is allowed situations to come on our life to throw a red flag up to say, you don't have enough faith right now. I need to work more in your life. I need other things that I've got to do, and I need you, and I need to have faith to do these things. So I'm not praying now while I'm going through something. I'm trusting. Because he said, if I could hear his voice, if I could hear him, and then just obey, he said he'd lead me. If I've got a word from the Lord, Brother Eric, I don't need nothing else. I don't need no other faith. I just have to have hear his voice and then obey. That's all the measure of faith I need to hear him. That's why, that's why, if you ever noticed somebody telling you they got healed, they said, when I heard that word, I had a woman come up to me in North, I mean, in, um, in uh, Rhode Island, had cancer. And she said to me, she said, today, today, I heard what you preached. And I believe, Brother Sanchez, I'm healed. She said that. She said, I heard what you said. Faith cometh by hearing. And that's all the faith she needed. So often we don't hear. We're not listening. We're begging. We're asking God to do these things for us, but we're not listening. We just want him to stop his kingdom to come down and fix my kingdom. When he's saying, I bought you. I love you. I need you. So I allowed this to come on you to, to stir your faith up. Because I got much more for you to do. But I need to fill you up with some faith. To believe. All right now. Come on, we're just going to lift up our hands one more time. Faith, talk to us tonight, God. Talk to us tonight. Let us hear the sound of your voice then I'll know that there is a God in Jesus name in Jesus name come on let's worship the Lord tonight seek for the hand of God. Listen for the voice of God. If you can get a word, that's all you need to make it through. Jesus.
rise. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. My faith can lift God up and make my enemies flee from me. Zarephath that Brother Sanchez made a reference to tonight. We talked about her last Sunday morning. When that prophet came to her and said, go make me a cake first. It was an unusual request given her dire situation. But he followed it up with a word from the Lord. He didn't just tell her, go make me a cake. He said, make me a cake first. And thus saith the Lord, the barrel of meal will not run out. The cruise of oil won't run dry. She heard the voice of God and she latched on to the word and she said no matter how ridiculous the request was I'm not concerned about the request I'm latching on to the word and her faith brought her through that dilemma we have to yes we're gonna pray for the hand of God to move but as brother Sanchez has tried to articulate to us tonight we have got to not just look for the hand of God but listen for the voice of God because if I can get a word in my dilemma I've got everything I need to make it through and to increase my faith. 
we need to put that into practice god i want to build relationship with you so that i can hear your voice and get a word even in trying times amen one more time let's give the lord a hand clap of praise tonight we love you jesus we thank you for the great work you're doing we love you give you praise lord if you want to continue to pray please feel free to do so if not you're dismissed in jesus name have a great week